Back when uh, I was a kid and my parents were told I had muscular dystrophy, they said that it would be a miracle if I reached 15. So here I am today. And I think the purpose for that is to reach out and speak to you and inspire people and use the lessons that I've learned from my challenging life to help others. When you leave here tonight, you will discover a fresh, new, exciting path to your own personal greatness. But at that moment, I decided that I wanted to live, not merely exist, live a life dedicated to my purpose. I would say thank you for being born with muscular dystrophy because it led me to a lot of situations in which I've been challenged and I've had to endure and deal with difficulty and overcome and throughout that process I've gained strength and knowledge. And there's so many examples of that, but one example I'd like to share with you happened to me when I was 22 years old. The year is 1987. I'm home by myself watching a late night rerun of a football game on TV. I love football, and when I'm watching football, I can't concentrate on anything else. I'm watching the game. But it didn't take much thought to realize that I was hungry. So I decided to order a pizza. Order a pizza and a two liter of soda. But then I realized I'd made a big mistake. You see, never in my life have I been able to open a two liter bottle. I don't have the strength in my hands and fingers to twist the cap with enough force to break it open. So, put yourself in that situation. What's the first thing you would try to do? First, I tried to do what everybody would do, which is what? Bite down on the cap, right? And twist it. Well, I bit down on the cap. I'm not going to do it now. I bit down on the cap and ended up biting the inside of my my mouth and bleeding, all right? I had now shed blood in the battle for the battle. I was not having water. I was having soda. Water was for wimps. I rolled back into the kitchen. And I laid that two liter down on the table. And I raised my hand in the air, which held a dart from my dartboard. <laughs> and I stabbed and squeezed into a cup the best tasting lukewarm beverage I've ever had in my life. his life for what it is, he gives you a little bit of humor, and then he takes you on this ride that allows you to experience the ups and downs that he has obviously experienced in life. And so that wows you and makes you say, you know what, I'm glad that I'm here, I'm glad that I came, and I'm glad that he um, dispelled all of those thoughts that I brought with me about seeing someone who is different than I am. 2012, there was a moment in my life where I was getting sick regularly and getting a lot of fluids in my lungs. That's what happens when you have congestive heart failure. And I remember one moment, I was laying in my bed and I could not breathe at all. Couldn't breathe at all. I didn't know whether I was going to live or die past these next few moments. And I'm thinking to myself, this might be it. And if it is, have I led a good life? And the answer was yeah. And then I asked myself another question. Have I reached enough people? Have I spread my message of inner strength throughout the world like I am destined to do? And the answer was no. So I more frantically jerked my head around and turned my body around and finally a little passage of air got into my lungs. And then another one. And I said to myself, if I can breathe clearly, I will never waste another breath in my life. Think about all the times in your life that you inhale and exhale. 
and take it for granted with no purpose whatsoever. When I realized I was going to live, I vowed to myself that I would never waste another breath. You know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And obviously, he may be weak physically, but there's nothing weak about him any other way. I'm amazed that someone that can uh, do what he's done in his life. I, I'm just, uh, I, I'll be talking about Greg Smith the rest of my life. A lot of times we go through life and we are defined by others. People put their definition of who we are upon us and it is easy to start to behave in that way that they define. I went to a, an event yesterday that was a regathering of people that I used to work with a long time ago. And back then, people had a perception of who I was. I was the little guy in the wheelchair that put together the materials that they would sell with, you know? And I haven't been that guy in 20 years. But when I was in that room with them, I felt like that's what they expected me to be like. Not a best-selling author, not a top motivational speaker, not a, a world-renowned broadcaster, but the little guy in the wheelchair that did the sales sheets. And you know what? Back then, that's who I was because that's who I thought I was supposed to be. But you cannot let other people's definitions of who you are stop you from becoming who you are becoming. If you do, that's what you deserve. But see yourself as who you want to be. I encourage you all to take out a sheet of paper, not now, but on your own time, and carefully write down the definition of who you are. Memorize it, believe it, and be it.